What's up, guys? It's your boy, the Pisces Prayer. I'm back with that TPP True Crime Talk, baby. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Before we go, can you do me a favor? Smash the button, the, the like one. And if you haven't already, can you smash that subscribe one? Appreciate it greatly. Try to get this channel growing. And I've been stuck at like 500 mark for a minute. And come on. I just need a little growth. Try to hit that 1K. Help your boy out. All right, I'll stop begging and let's get into the topic. All right, the topic for this video is my experience with domestic violence. Well, uh, so this is going to be an uncomfortable one, but I wanted to go ahead and speak on this because, you know, we just had the resurgence of the Gavin Petito, Brian Laundry situation, and then we had this new situation with um, this Nikki... Um, how to say her name, Alcarez, Alcarez, I hope I'm not murdering that, and then uh, Steven Stratt, right, and I just dropped a video prior to this one on my opinions of that situation, and it might make people mad, at it. some people might get it, if it makes you mad, you probably haven't had enough life experience to really wrap your mind around what I was talking about, but that being said, that's why we're going to get into this, because I feel like my story may give a different perspective on, you know, on, on this whole situation, right? So let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. So for me, you know, it was 2018 and basically things had been kind of weird with, you know, my marriage and, you know, my kid's mom had been really acting weird for like, I don't know, six, seven months, bro. Like it was strange. So one day I come home and I get slapped with this, you know, I want a divorce thing. And, you know, it wasn't as dry cut as that. There's a lot more to that story. But for the sake of time and uh, the fact that I don't want no sympathy over what shit I went through, we won't get into that. Um, but I, I'll just say what I went through in that situation and where I'm at right now. I don't, there's a lot of men that I don't think would have made it through that. And if you go look at statistics, a lot of men don't make it through it. But anyways, I digress on that. So after my separation, a few months go by and I, and I realized like, hey, man, you got to move on with life. Like you, you literally got to move on because there ain't, there ain't nothing you could do about the situation. There ain't nothing fixing it and there ain't nothing bringing it back. You, it's just time to move on. It is what it is. So, you know, I get myself out there and I start, you know, dating and get some experiences and trying to figure out this new dating scene. And I come from a very traditional upbringing, you know what I mean? This 80s baby, man. So it was, it's different. It's, things are so different now. But anyways, so I've dated, you know, a little girlfriend here, there, you know, it, it was all good. But nothing had stuck, you know, found one of one of the girls I was dating. We ended up just being extremely good friends, very close. And we ended up, you know, having a roommate situation and, and this and that. Well, you know, I'm still dating and I put myself out there and I uh, end up coming. I end up matching with this lady right on. Uh, I think it was Facebook dating. Yeah, I know. Facebook dating, whatever. Don't judge me. And uh, she she links up with me and she's all, hey, you know, like we match on a lot of things. She's like, but there's, you know, you smoke. And I don't think I drive with that. You know what I mean? And but and I, I ain't talking about cigarettes, bro. But I, I'd stop. I've stopped at this point now where I'm at in life now. I've stopped. But back then I, I was, you know, I was 420 up. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, she's like. But, you know, like my, I think you'd be perfect for my homegirl. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah well, you know, describe your homegirl. She describes her, and I'm just like, damn, you know what? That actually does sound like my type. I was like, it's kind of weird meeting this way. And then now you're trying to, you know, you set me up with your homegirl. But hey, life's crazy, right? So that is what it is. I'm used to this crazy shit, bro. My life's been crazy. Start to finish has been crazy. But, anyway, so. This woman, she checks all the boxes. She's feminine. She's well-spoken. She's intelligent. She's, you know, she's got some Native American blood in her like your boy does. And it just, I don't know. She fit the bill. You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, man, you know, I, I, uh, good. I mean, 
the good mom part is huge to me, and then the fact that she's intelligent, and you know, like I can go out, we go out to the land, out on the out in the wild, right? You can go in the wild, and you take my ass anywhere, and I could read terrain, I could tell you where to find certain things, I could hunt, I could fish, I could trap. I, I grew up obtaining skills that country boys do, even though I'm stuck in the city now, and you couldn't tell, right? But anyways she routed me out because i could take her out there and everything she didn't know i didn't know she knew what plants she could eat what plants did this what plants did that i don't know it was just seemed like it was perfect man it was perfect so we're talking long distance talking you know getting to know each other and we're vibing we're vibing we're vibing and you know at this point i'm like all right you know it's serious so you know we got a little vacation together and come back you know and we don't really want to leave each other. But when we come back, dead smack in the middle of COVID, dude, I ain't even lying. We come back, it is messed up too, because last day of our vacation, my back goes out. I got two herniated discs. I got some back issues I deal with. And um, like last day, my back went out. And so by the time we got back to Bakersfield from the coast, I mean, I literally couldn't really walk. So I'm like laid up in bed for two weeks. You know, she'd come back straight into a, a a situation where her friend had actually been assaulted you know what i mean straight up dv so she was dealing with that i was dealing with my thing whatever whatnot well we get back to like talking consistently and you know everything's going good and you know my back you know straightens back out so i'm you know doing my two jobs again and then going up to her house on the weekends and everything's gravy well you know, at this point, I had been roommating with my friend who was was an ex, not my direct ex, but she was an ex. And uh, I had thought before, like anything got serious with this woman that, you know, my friend, my roommate was going to end up moving. So I thought like literally the time frame of her moving and me and this one, this woman starting to talk that there would be no conflict. Right. Like. Even if she wasn't cool, the fact that one of my exes and my friend and she's my roommate, like, it wouldn't even be an issue because my roommate's about to move. So I don't really bring up the situation. Well, we're talking, we're seeing each other, and my roommate ends up coming to me and is like, hey, you know, this is a situation. I'm not going to be able to move when I thought I was. And then at the same time, the people that I thought would be able to move in are telling me they can't move in. So we're kind of stuck in a situation where it's, you know, the COVID popping, everybody's struggling. My work isn't struggling. Both my jobs, I'm still working. I'm actually working more hours than I've ever worked. And then my roommate's a nurse, so she's working crazy hours too, right? And uh, so it's just, it is what it is. Well, it looks like we're just kind of stuck doing this, you know, like roommate, and it is what it is. So I uh, I got to basically explain to the woman I'm talking to now, like, hey, you know, look, I got to explain to you who my roommate is. And, you know, I don't think it's a big deal, you know, but you might. So I explained it to her and she's upset at first. And, you know, I, I it's my fault. You know, I should have been up front from the get. But at the same time, I, like I said, I explained that I didn't think it was going to be a situation. So anyways, I explained it. She's upset. It's kind of tense for, you know, a couple weeks, but then it's like, she basically is, all right, you know, it is what it is. She's planning on moving and still eventually, right? I'm like, yeah, she's just, you know, it's going to take longer than I thought. And I, I really have no way to pay for this house unless I got the roommate. And I really don't want to give up this house my kids have been raised in because my future goal is basically once everything's said and done, divorce, child, custody, this and that, my kids are going to be with me, you know, primarily. So we keep seeing each other and you know like everything's cool for a few months and then it like i don't know six months in seven months in things just start getting a little bit of tense and i could tell like it's wearing on her the fact that i'm living with this roommate who was an ex so basically i'm at the point where look there's nothing i can do to change my situation monetarily and with this roommate situation so if it's going to keep being an issue, you know, for you, I don't want to put you through that. I fucking love you to death. And I think we have a future together, but like there's certain things that just got to happen right now to survive. 
and there's nothing I can do about it. So if we need to separate, I think that's probably what's going to be best for both of us. You know what I mean? Like I can't be doing all these hours and coming up and seeing you. And then when I come and see you, we're going to, we're going to fight or it's going to be weird because you don't trust that I'm, I'm, you know, being solid, that I'm being faithful, even though like you can go talk to any one of my exes my whole damn life. I've never cheated on women and I've never beat a woman. So I can't be treated like a cheater and a liar. You know, even though I should have been up front 100 from the start, it's, but it's not like we went through fucking, you know, a year of dating and then all of a sudden, like, oh, hey, you know, and my roommate's actually one of my exes. It's not like that. That's not the time frame. You know, once I realized that it was going to be an issue, I was upfront about it. You know what I mean? And at that point, if it was going to be an issue, she should have let me know. But anyways, like I said, we just, it kept going. Things were cool for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, shit started getting weird. So gets weird. I give her the ultimate. I'm like, hey, man, if this ain't going to work for you, uh, uh, we got to separate because I, I don't want to fight with you on the weekends. I don't want any kind of weirdness with us on the weekends. That's the only time we're going to see each other. It just, it, it's better for both of us. We just split. You know what I mean? And uh, in, the, in the back of my head, you know, I was hoping that, you know, we might split for, you know, a little bit and then Maybe then she would like, you know, uh, maybe that wasn't that great. Maybe, you know, I need to be a little bit more understanding, whatever. But like shortly after we split, she had posted some pictures and they made it seem like she was like, I'm out. You know what I mean? Like I've done moved on. So in my head, I'm like, all right, cool. She's moved on. So I went about my thing, you know, working my two jobs and then literally fishing and making videos like whenever I wasn't working. That's literally all I was doing. I was literally living at the, the California aqueduct or whatever body of water, most of the aqueduct. And I was just shooting, shooting film and fishing my, my butt off. So about a month goes by, maybe a month and a half. And, and I reach out to her mom because I'm friends with her mom, me and her mom click. And I was just like, Hey, you know, I just want to check on her, see how she's doing, but I, I ain't trying to call her directly. I just want to make sure she's doing good because you know, she'd be living up in the hills by herself with the kids and, you know, I know her limitations, you know, so I just want to make sure she's cool. Well, when I reach out to the mom, she's like, yeah, you know, like she didn't move on. I don't know what, what she posted to make it seem that way, but she didn't. And I know she misses you. So I'm like, well, damn, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I miss her too, you know? And so I reach out, you know, I reach out to her and I'm like, Hey, you know, how are you doing this and that? And, you know, she tells me how she's doing, asks me how I'm doing. And this, that small talk leads back into, you know, we talking again. And basically, you know, I go up and I see her and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm sorry about you not know, being up front with you in the beginning. You know what I mean? I was like, I really didn't think that was going to be that big of a deal. Whether you knew or not, honestly, I, I just, most of these women that I meet now, they really could care less if you're friends with your ex. So I just, I didn't think it was a big deal and I'm sorry, you know, and I think that we're good. Right. So we're, you know, we get back to seeing each other and it's like a good month in of us seeing each other again. And my situation here in the, at the house gets, you know, it's, it's not good. The way that my rent's being set up, it's actually having to go up some. Um, the second job I was I was at, like they were wanting to push more COVID restrictions and this and that, and the way they started running things, I wasn't jiving with. So it was like I could tell already that I was gonna end up getting that talk of like, "Hey, you're gonna need to conform with this, or you're gonna have to decide to leave." So. And I'm telling her all this, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, this is the situation. This is going on. I was like, I lose this job or the roommate, or even if I have both, it's looking like I might be in a situation where I'm going to lose this house. So I'm going to have to look again in an apartment. And so it goes from that to like, well, you know, I don't think you should get an apartment, you know, like maybe you should think about moving up here. And I was like, you know, I'd be down to do that. I know that you're wanting to see something serious. I know I want, I want serious. So like, you know, what, what shows a woman that you're more down for this, this relationship and wanting to go like the distance then, okay, let's move in together. We've already known each other for down near here. And 
outside of the little complication at the beginning, like everything's been good. So I go ahead, figure out the logistics, you know, U haul, this, that, and the third to, you know, get myself moved. And I move, you know, against my kids' wishes. They didn't really want me to move, you no, know, 30, 45 minutes away. I was like, hey, you know, well, this is basically, I'm either going to move up here and me and her are going to make this work, or I'm going to be stuck down here in a small house apartment in a shitty part of town working the two jobs seeing my kids the same amount if i would move up there and it just is what it is so i make the move and you know at first everything seems seems kind of chill and uh you know i didn't see little red flags at first but those red flags started to turn into big ass fucking banners right so things are getting a little bit tense and like there's little fights being picked over stupid shit. And when I get like any time I've been in an argument with any woman that I've been with, it's like, I know you got to fucking calm down. The only way to calm down a lot of times is you just got to separate yourselves, give yourself like half hour, hour, just kind of get away from each other. Think about it. Calm yourself down, come back together, talk, work it out. You know what I mean? Mature adults. Let's do this. So, you know, we have a couple, you know, stupid little arguments. You know, I do my walk around the block. I walk to the park, just chill, calm down. And uh, that worked. Well, well, it worked for me. You know what I mean? I thought it was working. Well, a couple more fights happen and it should get a little bit more tense. And I was like, wow, this energy is way different. I've never experienced this type of energy. It was a very hateful, angry energy. And uh, I just didn't understand it, you know? And I was like, wow, this is weird. So I come home one day from work and I'm literally driving 35, 45 minutes to work there and then same amount back. So I get home from work one morning and the energy's just bad. It's, it's really bad. And, you know, all of a sudden, like, little fight gets picked and I'm basically like, dude, what the hell? Like, where's this coming from? And it's basically, I'm being told it's, you know, I don't know if I could trust you because of how things started. Like, what? So, wait, you started seeing me again and then encouraged me that to make this move up here, like, we're going to, like, everything's good. But yeah, you're still tripping on the same stuff. And there's no reason to even be tripping anymore. I don't live with the individual that was the issue anymore and i literally do nothing but work and then i come home you literally know all my moves because damn near on the phone with you from the time i leave the house get to work and then from the time i leave work and get home so like i I don't understand what the situation is so things are a little bit more tense. And then I get home another day and we would gotten a letter in the mail saying, basically we got three months to move because the owner of the house wants to sell. So all of a sudden I'm like, damn, shit's getting real tense now. Like we gotta come together and figure this out. So I'm like pushing to like, hey, let's figure this out. We're going and looking at places, trying to figure out where we could go that we can afford, you know? And uh, during this, I'm starting to stress out because like this lady had accumulated like 15 years of just just stuff, like stuff. I'm not important stuff, just shit, like hoarder status, like a whole garage full of shit, whole attic full of shit. So during the time of looking at the house, I'm thinking like, "Well, well, we need to be working on this stuff. And like, she literally had like this mental block that a lot of people that hoard or or hold on to significance on things that don't matter like she was dealing with this and i'm like oh, okay i've dealt with i've dealt with people that have this situation before so i know i gotta be real gentle about how we proceed with this and i'm understanding you know but you could tell it's wearing on her and there's nothing i could say to change that so between looking trying to figure out where to live all this shit being cluttered and need to get things together to move and things are just getting more tense well you know i get home going through the same routine and two different occasions fights end up happening right and i dude i can't even tell you what it's over you know outside of me just like 
keeping shit real. Not, I'm not being an asshole about things, but I'm just explaining to her like, hey man, we have to get these things organized in this house. I know we, I know we don't have a house yet lined up, but we literally got to be able to move once we do because our, we're running out of time. And uh, that would lead into to fights. Well, we had two situations where during this, I basically had my clothes taken off of the rack in the closet and thrown on my face and told to get the fuck out. I'd never experienced this before. Ever, like I said, man, every woman in the, from my past will tell you I'm not I'm not a cheater. I'm not a beater. I'm not a violent dude. I, I might get pissed off like any other dude, you know, under the right circumstances. But definitely violence with a woman is not going to be what comes out of me. So these two different times, man, like I get assaulted and I like, what the fuck? So I leave, you know, walk, walk to the park, just kind of like sit there and contemplate what the hell is going on. How do I even deal with this? And man, you know, like I would get the phone call. Hey, where you at? You know, come back. I'm sorry. This, that, you know, like we'll work things out. I come back. We'll talk it out, whatever. Turn the day around. And I'm just like, okay, like, it, and I'll be honest. When these things happen, I blamed it on myself. I was like, you know what? She's going through all this stress and this and that, and you know, I could be more supportive with her issues with the hoarding. And, you know, also, you know, like, come on, man, you messed up at the beginning of this. So you kind of have some of this on you, right? Kind of blaming myself for being assaulted. And uh, so anyways, we ended up finding a place to live, but like she literally could not bring herself to deal with the mess to the point where I had to like kind of force her through it. You know what I mean? Like go out in the garage and start like, Hey, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with that? Like make trying to proceed. So we get somewhat packed, somewhat organized, like if, and it gets down to like a couple days to move and we got to get her, her friend and her friend's old man. Um, and then we got to get her cousin and, and her cousin's old man to come help. And when they show up, they're like, what the hell dude how come nothing's really ready to go and i told myself bro i've been trying i've literally been trying to get her to do this with me it's not from lack of me wanting to get this done i literally this is all her stuff i can't do anything with her stuff without her freaking out on me and so like they were pretty you could tell they're upset with thing and the same nothing so we get the move done right we get into this bigger house and i'm thinking all right man fresh start ain't her house it's not my house it's our house we kind of got through some of the clutter kind of you know got some shit organized like new chapter let's go we got this like everything's gonna be okay but see that's the thing is like in my head i thought everything was gonna be okay because i thought that because i am not a violent person and i'm not into that whole dv shit and I would never treat a woman like that. I thought that it would be appreciated in this situation. She would appreciate the fact that she's with somebody that even after hitting him twice in the face with clothes, still was not like even close to, you know, losing his shit and hitting her. So I thought like, okay, she's out of the situation. She's out of the house where she has bad memories connected to it. We've figured out all the stuff with her things. We're good to go. We got this. So. We get into this routine, you know, we're not there very long. So we start getting into a routine with my work and coming home and this and that. But shit just ain't right. Like, there's just this weird energy about her. You know what I mean? And I can tell, like, she's still, she's still, like, talking to me uh, in a way, like, that you would talk, like, women that talk to cheaters or, or, or bad dudes. You know what I mean? She's still talking to me like this. And I'm just like, what is going on? And I'm just like, all right, well, maybe she's just adjusting, you know what I mean? Maybe she's still, you know, I don't know, man. I'm making every excuse in my damn head to, like, make it seem like, you know, everything's going to be okay. Because I've never been in this situation before. I've never been with somebody that's literally been through 15 years of a domestic, violent fucking relationship. And I have no clue the type of damage I can do to a person. And especially what kind of baggage that'll bring if that person never went and got help. I just assume because I wasn't that type of person that, you know, 
things would never go that route. Boy, was I wrong. Was I wrong? And to give a little context to it is like, when I say she was in a domestic violent fucking relationship for 15 years, I'm not playing, dude. Some of the shit that she described to me that happened in her, her marriage to her kids that are out, I, they weren't even married, so I can't even say that. So their relationship. Some of the things she described to me literally would make me sick to my stomach and make me want to go fucking find dude and like you know what i mean like any normal good man would do like you fucking get told some stuff like this and make you make you want to go do some violent shit so that being said like she'd lived through some bad stuff so by default i thought just you know me being me like everything would be good like she didn't have to worry about being lied to hit this that a third but you know i was wrong i was definitely wrong so things don't really change the way i think they should you know what i mean i'm still getting this weird energy she's still like picking out little things and making little things into nothing like when i say little things like we first moved to this place right it's it's all fenced in and I got my dog, she's got her dog. They get along great, fucking little homies and stuff. And well, one of the neighbors had some huskies and my dog would run the fence line with these huskies, right? At first I check in, but the neighbor was like, oh, they're fine, they're fine. Eventually they're gonna get used to each other. So it doesn't bother me. You know, I'm just like, hey, they're doing mountain dog shit, right? They're doing country dog shit, whatever. Don't piss the neighbor off. It doesn't piss me off, we're good. So like, a couple times she got in a fight with me over my dog and and up till this point she was like treated my dog as good as like the kids you know what i mean like it was one of her fucking homies i have an austrian shepherd super smart fucking dog like just a lovable dude like anybody that gets around him like you, you can't help it you just love this dog and all of a sudden like she's going bad on me because of my dog and like i don't know it's just weird shit like this so i'm just like man you know like i don't know man maybe just the the adjusting of coming from the house where she had so much tension and issues to this house and like trying to find the new normal. I don't know. You know, like I said, I was just making excuses in my head. Things would get better. So, you know, so look like a week or two goes by and I'm at work and I get this message, this Facebook message, right? Little notification. Do ding. Well, it hits while well, I'm in the middle of like some straight rush, rush hour, shit at work i work in a warehouse production uh without giving away where i work i think i might have said already where i work but anyways the type of job i do we have spans of hour to two hours where you literally there's no way to check in your phone let alone like even fucking breaking to get a drink of water right without getting slammed and getting backed up so i don't check it and i forget about it right because at this point i still have like a lot of my social media stuff going from all the fishing videos and fishing content i'll be posting on instagram always some type of notification so i'll just like clear my notifications clear them clear them i didn't check the stupid fucking notification from her right and uh you know i didn't even think about it so two days go by and um i think it's like a what was it it was a Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday. So uh, I get off of work. I go pick my daughter up. And my kids would come spend the weekend with me. So I go pick my daughter up and I get back and, uh, you know, my daughter's playing with her kids and, you know, they're doing their country kid shit, going out, climbing rocks and, and whatnot, exploring the new neighborhood. It's mountains, you know, I'm up in the mountains and shit. So they're out there doing the thing. Love it. That's how I was raised. So it was cool, man. But anyways, so I'm, I'm, we're sitting up on the balcony, you know, connected to the, the master bedroom. And you know, we're up there smoking and just talking a little bit. And, you know, I, I, I thought the vibe was cool. I thought everything was okay. She seemed a little frustrated because she was dealing with some of the, um, one of the accounts up there for gas, you know, because everything runs off of propane. I know my country people know what's up with that. And, uh, yeah, you know, I was just like, all right, she's done with that. But she gets off the phone, she's waiting for a call back, and she's like, she hits me with this, oh, why didn't you ever check that message? And I was like, what message? And she I sent you a message the other day on a Facebook Messenger, and you never checked it. I was like, oh, man, you know what? I was like, I'll clear that notification. 
Um, so my phone would stop beeping. I literally couldn't even check anything. I totally forgot about it. And she's all, oh, I'm sure. And um, she's all, well, you should probably check it. And then right after she says that phone rings and it's the gas company. So she gets on the phone and she starts talking to them. And I'm thinking, oh man, I don't like the feel of this shit, dude. I do not like the feel of this at all. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and while she's doing that, I'm gonna go down here, big ass rosemary hedge that borders the neighbor's property. And they'd asked me to get it trimmed up. So, you know, I went out there and I'm trimming this rosemary up and stuff. And I'm just like, what she said, man, was just like, where am I? So what does she mean? I need to check that message. I thought maybe she just sent me a, a fucking a song or some type of political something, you know, whatever, whatnot. So I go to check it. Oh, damn, dude. And when I check it, it's basically a slideshow of pictures from my ex roommates Instagram page. And it was basically, let me get some context to this. My roommate, who was an ex, was an MMA fighter. She had done fucking, you know, photo shoots for fucking fitness, female fitness stuff. Um, very well put together girl, right? Very well put together. But like I said, oil and water, there's nothing there anymore besides respect, friendship, that's it. But anyway, she had taken a bunch of her pictures from the time that she had been living at the house where I was at, where we were both roommating. They'd taken all these pictures of her and put them in a slideshow and put music to it and put like text in it. And basically it was, and it's fucked up because she took one of my favorite songs, man, and ruined it because she, she put that song to it and it's weird too because this song it was significant to me but it was never a song that was between me and her you know what i mean it just it just so happened to be one that had this and she didn't even know the significance it had to me but anyways this whole slideshow and all these pictures and this music and all this text is basically accusing me of cheating on her the whole time we've been together saying that i was cheating with my roommate I'm not playing, bro. Like, one, my whole family could vouch for the fact that that shit did not happen. The fucking ex-roommate, the ex-friend, whatever, could, could straight up, and actually straight up, at one point, I told her, like, hey, like, before me, I, I never moved up there, I told her, like, when shit first popped off, like, hey, there's nothing between us, never will be anything between us. It was like a small, short relationship. We're just really good friends. That's it. My kids literally could tell her. So like she would put this whole narrative and story together and accuse me of all this shit over a year after getting me up there, after getting me up there, fighting with me, assaulting me twice, moving with me into a house that was in my name too. And like creating this whole fucking life she's sitting there basically accusing me of some shit that that never happened never fucking happened but took pictures that my my ex-roommate had posted of working out in my home gym right because i've always had fucking equipment and i've, I've trained mma trained jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu blue belt all this shit. So I always had workout equipment at the house. And during COVID, I worked at the house. My roommate worked at the house. I was hardly ever at the house, but my roommate would use the gym to do her photos and shit like every other gym chick does. So she'd taken all these pictures and basically accused me of being a cheater because my ex roommate used my gym equipment. Bro. That video literally made me sick to my fucking stomach. And I, I didn't even know how to address it. I mean, I I just, I didn't even know where, what to do, what to say. Like, I, my brain is just, everything's spinning. My world's spinning. I'm like, what the hell is what? So I close it. I finish trimming the hedges and shit. And as I'm starting to trim, you know, finish it up, um, 
you know, the girlfriend walks outside and says, oh my God, that looks so good. You know, like totally different dynamic, totally different demeanor. And uh, I'm just like, all right, cool. Like, damn, all right, she's happy, cool, whatever. Like, but how do I address this? And I'll be honest with you, dude. I didn't know how to address it. She was in a good mood. And I was just like, man, do I want to get this started? My kid's here right now. I, I really don't. I don't. Fuck, man. I don't even know how to deal with this. And before I could even say anything, she's like, oh, you know, like I got everything cleared up with the gas company. This and that. Like, hey, what should we do for dinner? Should we go to the new, you know, Wiener Schnitzel up here? There ain't a lot of places to eat. So Wiener Schnitzel is kind of big when the new place pops. So I was like, cool, let's do that. So we go and get the food. We come back, you know, eat this and that. Bro, I'm not joking. Like, within two hours, I'm fucking sick as a dog. Like, this shit was, man, food poisoning like I never had. So, like, I'm sick that night. I'm sick all of Saturday. And it's just, it's horrible, right? So, I'm waking up Sunday morning, and I'm just like, I do not feel good. I still don't feel good. But I hear, like, everybody is up in the house downstairs. I can hear them up. And then all of a sudden, I hear her yelling at my dog. You know, I hear my dog up there running back and forth with the other dogs. And all of a sudden, I hear her yelling at my dogs. I hear a door slam. I hear stopping coming up the stairs. And she starts yelling at me, uh, yelling at me about the dog. And I'm like, I've been sick as shit. I'm still sick. So I'm just like, what the hell? And I get up. I throw some stuff on. I go down. I yell at my dog. Tell him to come up. I get him in the house. You know, like, dude, you got to calm down, bro. And I, I know I'm, I'm a little pissed because I'm like sick of shit. And she's yelling at the dog over some shit that don't even matter because the neighbor's cool with it. Like literally the barking isn't even that loud. These dogs are just fucking playing basically. So I'm like, I mean, and the attitude she'd given me, like you're straight, I'm waking up sick to attitude. So I'm like, dude, what is going on with you? Like, I don't. What's the deal? And she's like, basically, well, I think you know what the deal is. You, you weren't even going to respond to me about what I sent you. And I'm like, you know what? I was like, yeah, I, I looked at it and I've been sick for two days. And literally right after I looked at it, you had come out all happy and was like, hey, what are we going to do for dinner? This and that. So, yeah, I wasn't going to respond to it because I don't even know how to respond to it. I was like, I think it's fucking insane. So, I mean, what am I supposed to say? Dude, she starts going off on this tirade of that, you know, she can't believe that she believed me and that, you know, I was a cheater this whole time and this basically saying all the shit that was on this little slideshow, right? And I'm at the point where I'm just like, you know, I've been 100% honest with you. Like, outside of fucking not being upfront about who my roommate was, and then that, within the first three months, that was cleared up. And we weren't even 100% serious up until, like, you know, two months in. So, you said you would be all right. Like, we would get through this. Like, this wasn't going to be an issue. So, well, you know, what I said, what it is, it's either, dude, I'm not playing, man. started like emotionally manipulating me, trying to gaslight. There's all kinds of shit, man. And basically, I'm just like, I get to the point where I'm just like, you know what? I put my hands up on my head. I put my hands up on my head like this. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know what else to tell you. There's literally nothing I could say that's going to make you believe me because I've already told you, you can go talk to my family. You can go talk to my parents. You can call the ex roommate up. You can talk to her. You can talk to them all. I do not care. I was like, I'm not lying. I'm not a cheater. This whole thing you've put together in your head is on you. Like you've created some story in your head that you drove, drove crazy, yourself crazy with. There is nothing else I can say to you. There's nothing else I could do to you, right? Whole time I'm saying this, I have my hands on my head, right? I'm laced up behind my head. And bro, out of nowhere, crack. Like just straight. Hits me with the fucking right. Like, I'm tell okay, dude. And I've already said, dude, I've, I grew up fighting, poor ass fucking street kid fighting. I grew, I mean, I've done martial arts. I've got a cage fight. Like, I've, 
I've been hit. I've been hit. I know what a good hit is. I know what a fucking good hit is. And she hit me as she hit me as hard as any dude has ever hit me. Like, I mean, fucking crack me. I saw lights. I shook it off and I looked at her. I was like, what did you just do? What are you doing? And then like she's in my face. Like, she's literally in my face trying to get me to engage with her. And instantly every story that she had told me about her previous experiences and her domestic violence, it literally it all started playing back through my head. And I was like, holy shit, I'm in this bad situation right now. And another thing that's factoring in my head is this is literally the time frame that this is happening. It's literally right in the middle of Gabby Petita and Brian Laundry, like the whole situation. This is happening literally in the middle of this. So I'm already, my mindset's already on this whole, cause like I said, I've been doing true crime forever, right? I just started making videos not too long back, but I've been following true crime forever. So immediately my brain starts processing everything that she's already been through and how bad it is and like how violent it has been at times. And the fact that times where she thought like literally like her or her man were gonna kill each other right so she hits me and i start processing all that and i start thinking like the situation that's happening internationally and or nationally and like how everybody's looking at you know the domestic violence situation and how quick it gets put off on the guy and i'm just like i'm factoring all this shit in and i remember also that she keeps her fucking handgun literally at this point because we still are unpacking and getting everything set up she literally has her handgun sitting on the fucking nightstand and this shit's all factored into my brain i'm like holy shit she just hit me holy shit she's literally in my face trying to get me to hit her and all this other shit's processing and i'm like what the fuck do i do i've never been in this situation at all I've never been in this situation whatsoever, right? And now I'm in this situation with somebody that's been deep into this situation to the point where she thought her or her man, her kid's dad, were going to kill each other. And I, I'm just like, instantly, my brain's just like, call the sheriff. Call the sheriff. Like, straight up, dude. Like, literally... That's the only thing that's going to diffuse this situation right now. And you can't get it amped up anymore because, for one, you never even thought this woman would put hands on you. And she went from, like, throwing fucking clothes in your face twice to actually punching you strip in the face. There's a gun sitting fucking five feet from you. This shit cannot escalate anymore because, one, you ain't going to do nothing to her, but you don't know what the fuck she's going to do to you. So I literally got to get... I literally turn around, I walk to bed, grab my phone, and I call. And I'm like, hey, I, I just got assaulted by my girlfriend. She's trying to get me to hit her. I need help. There, she's, she's going insane. I need help. I was like, I've never, like, and I'm literally, I'm, I'm in tears, basically, making this phone call. And as she sees me do this, it, like, I think it clicks in her brain, like, Oh, fuck. I messed up. So she goes out on the balcony and starts trying to make a call to the police. She just assaulted me. Tried to get me to hit her. And now she's going to start calling the police to flip it on me. I, 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 I shit you not. So I hang out with the sheriff. She gets off the phone and she comes in and you would think that would have been enough to defuse the situation, right? No. She gets back in my face. She's literally trying to get me to do something before the cops get there. And literally, I just, I'm just standing there letting her yell in my face. Letting her kind of chest shove me and shit. And I'm just like... 
I, the only thing I could think to do at this point, I know the cops are coming. I know that I literally can't say nothing else to her or else it's going to get worse, right? Because she's like in this, bro, I, I know that other people have been in situations where, you know, like you've seen somebody's eyes change, bro. That's what it was. She went into this different zone. Where I was like, oh, damn, dude, this is demon, demon time. Like, she ain't who she is normally or who she puts off to be. And, like, my whole, the whole thought is still going, hey, this could get crazy worse. She's already talked about how bad it's gotten before in her relationships. And she's pushing you to make it this bad. There's literally a firearm sitting five feet away. Boy, you don't say a damn thing. So the only thing I could think to do is like call my grandpa, call my dad, let him know, hey, this shit's popping off. I, I'm gonna need some help. Um, cops are on the way, but I, I'm gonna need some place to stay. I'm gonna need some way to get the hell out of this. And um, another thing too, um, to give a little context to it, one of the things that's rolling through my brain is my last name, right? So my last name in the county I live in, as far as law enforcement goes, I have an older cousin and a little brother. Uh, without saying too much of what they've done or how much time they're doing, they've ruined my fucking last name. I mean, when I say ruined, usually when I get pulled over for some stupid like speeding or some shit like that, or just the fact that I go to work so early in the morning that, you know, like you could just get picked to get pulled over. Well, every time, damn near every time I've ever been pulled over, like they approach me with two vehicles. That's how it is. They, there's multiple cops when they approach my vehicle. And that's because of my last name. So that's part of what's going through my head too, is like, yo, with your last name, bro, if you don't call and this progresses any farther, it's gonna be your ass. It's just a hundred percent, it's gonna be your ass. And, uh, yeah, man. So, you know, I avoid the conflict. As soon as I really get on the phone with my grandpa, dude, um, she she knows my grandpa. She's good with my grandpa. Like, they had a good relationship. The moment she hears that I'm on the phone with him, she's like, she shuts up and she goes downstairs. And she starts, like, getting the kids, like, ready to leave. Her kids ready to leave. Like, she's going to attempt to leave before cops show up. So anyways, I tell my dad, I tell my grandpa, what's up, get off the phone with them. And I'm still in a daze, bro. Like both, I can't believe I'm in this situation. And two, I'm not playing. She fucking hit me hard as shit, but she rang my bell. Like one of the hardest hits I've ever taken. And I've been punched plenty. So I'm still just, I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on, what I'm supposed to do. And, um, of course, when the police get there, even though I was the one that called for help, they get there and they treat me like the aggressor. So they get there, right? They they ask who's who, and she's kind of standing off to the side out front and you know, just talking to them. And they pull me straight out to the sheriff fucking SUV, put me up against it, pat me down. Like, literally treat me like a fucking criminal when I'm the one that just got assaulted. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking telling the sheriff, you know, what happened. And I'm literally in tears the whole fucking time. Like, I'm breaking down because, y'all, I fucking love this woman. And I had tried to, like, think the best of the situation. And, like, this couldn't really be what it is. So I, I don't know, man, I was, I was in fucking tears all the time. And then they're like, well, you know, do you want to press charges? And I'm like, no, nah, you know, I don't want to press charges. You know, I don't want nothing to happen to her. She got the kids and this and that. And basically at this point, the knot had fucking, you, you could see it, dude. It was, it was, I was lumped up and he could, the sheriff, you know, is hearing what she's saying. She's basically telling on herself. She admitted to hitting me, and then she was basically trying to justify what she did, telling him that, you know, about some shit that happened like a year ago. 
with the whole roommate thing. So it was like, she had told on herself. So at, at that point, they had no choice. They're like, well, you know, we have to put her on a 24-hour hold at this point. Like, regardless if you want to press charges or not, this is basically what has to happen. And um, they're like, you know, we're just have to keep you two separated until her family gets here to get the kids. And then, you know, we got to take her in. And they start asking, you know, are there guns in the house? And I'm like, you know, yeah, I have some. She has some. And, you know, if you if you if you know anything about the domestic shit, they end up, you know, because she assaulted me. She was the aggressor. They end up taking her guns. And, man, it, it was fucking horrible, dude. I said, I sat on the tailgate of this SUV for, I don't know, an hour just fucking crying just feeling like a i don't know how i felt man i had so many different emotions because it's like no dude wants to call the cops over getting hit by a female you know what i mean no dude wants to go through that you know no dude wants to go through the, the heartbreak of fucking loving a woman that much to where you would like literally change so many things about your life and then to have that woman like turn around and accuse you of just horrible shit and then assault you and so family shows up kids to get the kids you know you know the fucking sheriff's hook her up put her in the car and they take off and the sheriff's telling me like here's the report on it here's the information and he was like hey man i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you straight up and the sheriff was straight up real with me he's like one you did the right thing he's like i could see your records clean you don't have anything on you like there's not, nothing in your your records clean. He's all, but I already know about her. I've already dealt because you know it's a very small town. All the the sheriffs or police that have showed up for domestic shit at her previous house must remember something. He's all. I'm gonna explain something to you, man. He's like, you've never been through none of this because you're normal. Because you're normal. You function on normal. He's all people like this who have been through this their whole life, have seen it as a norm. He's like, this is their norm. He's like, and it's just not going to work out good for you, my man. He's like, you, you need to you need to get out of here. He's like, because this will happen again. People that, that have lived through this, if they don't get go and get help, he's like, this is going to be the norm for any of their relationships. So I'd recommend... An individual like you gets as far away from an individual like her as possible. Yo, and it was like, I mean, I, my brain was already factoring that, you know, but when he, when the sheriff told me that, I was just like, damn. He's all, I know, he's all, I know you feel bad. He's like, but you did the right thing. He's all because, you know, it could have ended up so many other ways. And I was like, you're right. You're absolutely right. So, they take off right so at this point it's me at the house and my daughter my youngest daughter is there my youngest daughter she all my kids are pretty worldly savvy right i don't raise them sheltered at all i explain everything in this life to them so she's she's shook but she's more pissed than anything right and we're talking like she was 10 i think she's 10 at this point nine or 10 and she's pissed man and i was like hey you know i was about to explain to her you know the situation because all the kids were downstairs when it popped off and she's like dad i heard everything we heard everything she said to you and she hit you so hard that we heard it from downstairs and i'm just like fuck man it's like the last thing you want your kid to experience so it, it was my mind was made up at that point you know i packed what i could my girl my little girl in the car and my dog i drove a load down in my little car and then i came back up with my middle daughter and we loaded up all my essentials that i could get loaded my car up moved, and, and went down and you know i went and found a storage unit got that rented and then uh, got a U-Haul set up for the following weekend. And basically, uh, 
you know, I called the sheriff's department to get a, get them to come out to, you know, facilitate me getting my stuff. And her, I had her cousin come out to also, you know, be there as, you know, another witness to, to when I got my stuff. And you know, I went up there with the U-Haul and my best friend in a trailer. And, uh, you know, dude, it was, it was fucking rough though, man. It was rough. But man, I tell this story. I tell this story just because it's real easy to like see these domestic violence situations happen and then for people to make you know quick judgments on shit as far as like thinking they know what the dynamics are but you know it ain't always what you think it is it's it just isn't man it, it just isn't because me being you know this straight white male you know with the last name that i have in the county i live in you know this situation happens and i don't call right and she calls regardless if i did anything or not had she called before i made that phone call and and, and claimed that i had done anything it would have been my ass it would have been my ass 100 percent. that have been fucking throwing my ass in jail 100%. Even with the kids here and everything, all that, like it would have been my ass. So the only thing that saved me that day was the fact that I called first, right? I called first and she could be heard in the background saying shit. And then her being so emotionally erratic and toxic and, and like, spouting out her delusions to the police those are the only two things that saved me because like i said when the police first showed up the sheriff's preferred show they pulled my ass to that car like i did something wrong and just pulled her to the side and started talking to her so i tell you man i'll tell you dude these situations ain't always what they seem and men do get the fucking bad end of the deal it ain't always the man it ain't always the man, you know? And uh, for any guys out there, man, that by chance might stumble across this fucking video, this long, almost an hour video now, if you find yourself in a relationship like this, you need to get the hell out. Bro, get the hell out. Because the stigma's gonna, gonna last forever, in my opinion. When domestic violence situations go down, it is immediately always going to be the man's fault. It always is. Um, so it's like, don't gamble. Don't gamble on things getting better. Um, if the person's refusing to get counseling, which this person refused to get counseling, even after I went and started getting counseling. And I think that's part of one of the things that actually made it worse was shortly before we moved into the new house, I decided to go to counseling for like some depression and anxiety I was dealing with. And um, I feel like that caused more separation because they started giving me more clarity of what was going on. And uh, this person refused to go to counseling and acknowledge the things that were, were messed up with her and that were causing issues. So it's like if you find yourself in, in a situation where a female is... Uh, willing to physically harm you, isn't willing to go to counseling, get the hell out. Get out. I, I don't care if you have kids with her. I don't care if you're married. I don't care any of that shit. Get out. Because what happened to me and the outcome that happened for me is not the norm. What happened to me is the norm. That happens a lot. And most men will never report it, never say anything because they don't want to have this like look like they're, you know, I don't know, like they're, they're weak, but bro, who cares about what people think? You're going to seriously wait around, catch hands, catch hands, catch hands. And then one time catch hands and then get accused of being the one that does it. 
The only thing that saved me that day, like I said, was I called first and she messed up in her emotional, you know, chaoticness and told on herself. Had she not told on herself, it would have been a he said, she said. And even though I called first, there's a good chance we both would have got 24 hours. So I don't know, guys. I know this has been a long video. Um, I don't know if anybody actually cared to watch the whole thing or listen to the story, but I hope some of y'all do, especially, you know, women with boys, teach your sons this, any men out there that are dealing with this, or even just any men out there, learn, man, learn from it, take it in, think about it. Just realize that in this world, dude, like you gotta, you gotta protect yourself at all times in all bad situations um just understand that the things that can happen if you don't act properly so anyways that's my story guys with the with the domestic violence and uh yeah i i just wanted to jump on and talk about it because like i said these uh the gabby petito laundry you know trial that's happening right now and then this uh recent case that had popped up you know they it I shouldn't say it really triggered me, but it really got me thinking about everything that I went through. And I, I wish I could say that it, it stopped after I left the house, but it the, the violence part stopped, but the mental and emotional distress that I went through lasted oh, another good year. Another good year of me, like, yeah, just being messed up in the head over it. And it took some counseling. It took some serious counseling to, to get to the point where I'm at now. So I don't know. One of my subscribers said I should, you know, maybe tell the story, you know, that it would be good for therapy. And I don't know if it was so much good for therapy because I don't know about putting all your, your crap out on social media, if that's really that great. But I feel like this story, if it helps at least one guy navigate that situation and get out of it, you know, safely. Um, without ruining his reputation or ruining his, you know, making a criminal record for himself over something he didn't do, then, hey, it was worth it. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's my story. That's my story, and uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think if you made it this far. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's wild, I know. But, um I think I'm going to drop more stories, life stories. They, uh, they ain't all like this. Some of them are pretty good. But uh, I kind of enjoyed this a little bit. So that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. It's your boy, the Piscean Predator. And until next video, much love to all you beautiful people out there. I'm out, y'all. Peace.